great impact towards the upliftment of the socioeconomic condi condition of the poor farmers, particularly in Abra. And the training, growth, and production has been conceptualized and provided to the Garden, Guardian Brotherhood Incorporated Abra chapter. The object of the study is to identify the knowledge and skills gained by the training participants, to enumerate the gold production technology adapted by the training participants and their corresponding beneficial effects, to enumerate the gold production technology failed to be adapted by the training participants and the reason why they did not adapt it. And lastly, to determine the impact of the gold production technology training comb dispersal project. For the method of, of the study, the research design was adopted in this study is descriptive design, design, specifically the survey method. The study made use of census or total enumeration, purposive or judgmental design. The unit of analysis study were the participants of the Go production training conducted by the ASIS, and they were also the recipients and beneficiaries of the ASIS extension goat dispersal project. Personal interview was done through the use of a structured interview schedule. And during the interview, the questions were translated into vernacular dialect, which is Ilocano for better understanding of the participants. As a result of the study, the beneficiaries were asked if they have gained or no gain benefits in the training attended provided by the ASIS CAFC extension program. And all of the respondents answered that they were benefited from the trainings they attended on gold production technology given by the ASIS CAFC program. For the knowledge and skills gained from the training, almost of the respondents answered that they improved their skills in selecting goods for breeds of goats, increased their knowledge and skills on identifying and treating common diseases for goat and other animals, increased knowledge on housing requirements of goats, became aware on the care management of goats, increased awareness on forages of goods for goats and other animals, and become knowledgeable on how to preserve forages for future consumption. The respondent were also asked if they adopted or not adopted the various goats production technology provided by the CAFSI ASIS CAFSI extension programs. It is resulted that the technology on stock selection was adopted by all most of the respondent. The technology on housing management was adopted by almost of the respondent and only a minimal proportion, which is one respondent, did not adopt the said technology. And the lack of availability of area or materials was given as the reason for not adapting of such technology. Also, the technology on forest management was adopted by more than three-fourths of the respondent. And only minor of the respondent, which is two of them, did not adopt the such technology. And an availability of forage area has been cited as the reason for not adopting such technology. For the effect of the gold production technology adopted, the respondent answered that the effect of different production technologies that they were adopted is almost of the respondent answered that the adoption on the technology on stock selection yielded to a better yield breed. And almost of the respondent answered that the adoption on the technology on housing management resulted into very much comfortable shelter of the goods caged off. And 14 of these 14 of the respondents answered that the adoption of the technology on forest management gave rise to availability of more feed stuff, and two of them answered that it is resulted to a better stock or breed. For the common diseases prevention and control technology, almost of almost of the respondents answered that it is resulted to a healthier stock and parasite control. On the manner of disposing their goat, six of the participants sold their goats. One which was butchered from home consumption was valued at 2,500 pesos. Another goat is butchered and sold was valued at 600 pesos. 
However, those gold disposed by dead and replacement were no, lo were lower, no longer given estimated price values. The total value of the goods disposed was 21,800 with an average of 2,725. The income derived from selling the goods were used to purchase kitchen needs like food as answered by the four respondent, purchase personal needs like clothing as answered by the two respondent, allowance for children as answered by the three respondents, purchase of school needs for children as answered by the two respondents, one answered that it is for additional tuition fee for children, and three of the respondents answered that it is for purchasing additional head of goat. However, the three of the respondents had no response. It is recommended that there should be a continuous monitoring and evaluation conducted by the College of the Agriculture Forestry Extension Program. The CAFC Extension should initiate a forage processing demonstration center as model for good producer to, to emulate, and financial assistance should be sourced out to help the beneficiaries establish their forage processing unit. And it is also recommended that the forwarded Recommendation of the respondent should be considered by the CAFC Extension Program and other government and non-government organizations to further improve their good production enterprise. It was pointed out that the participants of the good production technology were able to improve their skills in selecting good breeds of goods, increase their knowledge in identifying and trading common diseases, increase their knowledge on housing requirements of goods, become aware on the care management of goods, increased awareness on forages good for goods and other animals, and become knowledgeable on how to preserve forage for future consumption of animals. The good production technology adopted by the training participants and their corresponding beneficiaries, beneficials effects were technology on stock selection yielded to a better breed, Technology on housing management resulted to a very much comfortable shelter for the goats carried off. The technology on forest management gave rise to availability of more feed stuff and towards better quality of stock for breed. Technology on com common diseases prevention and control led to better parasite control and production of healthier stock. For the technology on forest processing has not been adapted by the participants because it is hard to do, complicated, and expensive. And the beneficiary of the gold production technology, Comdispersal project, was able to realize an average income of 2,725. So these are my other, other references of this study. So that's all, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Mom Jane Escalidae, for sharing with us your research paper with the significant findings that effects and impact impacts of the project to the beneficiary improve their gold production enterprise. The beneficiary of the gold production technology training were able to improve their skills in selecting uh, trainings. So again, thank you so much, Mom. So now let's proceed to our ninth presenter from Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Sipokot Campus, uh, Bicol, Philippines. Uh, she will be presenting research paper titled Mycomining Ge Geological Mapping Species Listing and Morphometric Characterization of Natural Occurring Macrofungi in Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Sipokot Campus by Ms. Eunice S. Luella. Good morning, ma'am. One. Our scholarly study is entitled Micro Mining, Geological Mapping, Species Listing, and Morphometric Characterization of Naturally Occurring Macrofungi in Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Sipakat Campus. And it is reasonable to wonder why we have chosen this specific topic to discuss. And that explanation is as follows. 
Mushrooms, unlike other plants, cannot synthesize their own food, therefore develop special methods of living, which include symbiosis, saprophytism, and parasitism in an ecosystem, according to the Green Pages 2021. In relevance, aside from the rich natural environment with vast hectare land reservations, massive vegetation as well as abundance of woody plants, trees and leaf litters that are ideal substrate in growing mushroom, Central Wickle State University of Agriculture's Board of Regents Resolution No. 35, Series of 2020 approved the establishment of the CBSUA Processing and Research Center, which intends to provide a place for mushroom-related practical scientific researches, innovation and production, which made it an ideal site in conducting this study. Amidst of the relatively high number of recorded macrofungi in Asia, with an estimated total of 10,000 to 25,000 species, according to Miller et al. 2007, Philippines only documented 3,956 species, representing 818 genera of fungi, which has been identified and recorded in the study of the Joseph 2012. Hence, leading this research may be a useful practice to improve yields introduce new species to market and to preserve germplasm of macrofungal species before their natural environments are disrupted or destroyed by human action. Objectives of the study. Identify the species of macrofungi that are present in the CBSUA Sifakot. Determine the morphometric characterization of the collected naturally occurring macrofungi of CBSUA Sifakot with the special emphasis to type, fill use, and attachment to the substrate, enumerate the substrate utilized by the collected samples, and distinguish the geological location of the collected macrofungi of CBSUA Sipakot. Methodology Collection of naturally occurring mushrooms. The collected macrofungi were photographed on its substrate, and gathered specimens were placed in polypropylene bag, properly labeled and sealed. And it was been transported for morphological identification to the Central Wickle State University of Agriculture, Sipakat Campus, Agriculture and Industrial Technology Research Center. Tools used in collecting macrofungi. Knife, hand shovel, specimen container or the polypropylene bag, tags and labels, phones, cameras, Identification of collected mushroom was guided by the macroscopic features stated in the book A Field Guide to Mushrooms by Kent H. McKnight and Vera B. McKnight that was published in the year 1987 and with the use of Mushroom Identify app as well as Google Lens. Mushroom tissue culture. Preparation of media. One liter of matured coconut water is added with 20 grams of shredded white gulaman bar and mix until the solution is homogenized. Then, solutions are put into Erlen Meyer's flask, plugged with cotton as well as secured with aluminum foil or paper and rubber band. Afterwards, the prepared media was placed in an autoclave for sterilization process at 15 PSI per 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. The newly sterilized media were dispensed in petri dishes and allowed to cool and solidify. Preparation of cup for stipless mushroom. The cup of the collected macrofungi was placed inside a sterilized bottle that contains the 10% sodium hypochlorite solution using forceps and shaken for 2-3 to three minutes for sanitizing purposes. This was followed by transferring the mushroom cups using forceps to the 90% solution of sterilized tap water in another bottle which was repeated for 3 times. Note that separate bottles must be used to avoid spoilage of the collected specimen. Afterwards, the sanitized mushroom cup is held using tweezers and forceps directly placed into petri plate and cut into tiny pieces using scissors. While for mushrooms with type, tools was exposed to alcohol lump before using for sterilization purposes. Then, Mushroom was placed on a clean paper for two to three hours to get the moisture present be evaporated. This was followed by mushroom will be slit open into halves longitudinally. And lastly, in a petri dish using a blade or scalpel, cut a small piece of tissue from the center of the mushroom. 
inoculation of the mushroom. New solidified media is prepared as tissue inoculated at the center using tweezers and 5 mm cork water. Afterwards, it is sealed with clean wrap. Incubation of media. The newly inoculated media will be placed in an incubation chamber under room temperature on 25 degrees Celsius according to IUPAC and was allowed to ramify. Results and discussions. Topography of CBSU East Sipakat Campus. It is located at Song 5 in Pig Sipakat Camarines Sur, which is situated at approximately 13.78204 north and 122.9782 east in the island of Luzon. Elevation at this coordinates estimated at 40 meters or 131.2 feet above the mean sea level according to Philippine Atlas 2021. Additionally, during the month of July, Sipakat have daily high temperature around 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which rarely falls below 83 degrees Fahrenheit or exceeds to 90 degrees Fahrenheit according to Weather Spark 2021. Results and discussion. Morphometric characterization of collected naturally occurring mushrooms. Morphometrics refers to the study of shape variation of organisms and its cover other variables according to Casanova 2017. In CBSU AC Pocket, 39 macrofungal species were collected. Samples of mushroom with type includes Padistrao mushroom or Volvariella volvacea, white dancecap or Canisibe apala, and Sealy or the Gymnopilius sapineus. Meanwhile, mushroom without type includes Hairy juice ear or Auricularia cornea, Turkey tail or Traumatis versicolor, and poroid bracket fungus or traumatis cubensis. Mushrooms margin of pileus. Data elucidated 17 macrofungi, which has entire or smooth pileus, 17 irregular or wavy, and 5 split or crenate. Mushrooms gill spacing. Among the collected macrofungi, there are 21 which has gills and 18 have none, in which 17 belongs to the group of species which has closed gill, while three has crowded and one is distant. Mushroom gills attachment to stipe. Ten species are adnexed, six are adnate, four are descending, and one is free. Environmental substrate of naturally occurring mushrooms. 25 species were found growing on decaying logs and woods, 12 on soil, and two on rotten banana trunk. That mapping of the geological locations of mushroom in Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Pasacal Campus. The presented map shows the exact places in the site where the naturally occurring macrofungi were collected and which different colors represent different species. Overall, there are 95 wood roughing, 12 soil fungi, and two straw mushrooms that was listed and found. Summary and conclusion. Findings reveal that CVSU AC Pocket Campus is considered as a natural habitat of 19 families, 29 genera, and 39 macrofungal species with promising potential for various applications. Recommendations. It is highly recommended to conduct a monthly collection of mushrooms on site in order to identify and gather more of its species in a year-round basis. Furthermore, it is also desirable to utilize and run molecular identification procedures to precisely determine the species of the collected sample. The following are the references. That would be all. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay, so thank you so much, Ms. Eunice Dizuela, for sharing with us your research paper. The CBS UAC Pocket Campus has a diverse microfungi variety. That collected microfungi can be a source of a potential bioactive compound that can be useful to mankind. So thank you so much. 
Ma'am Eunice. So now let's proceed to our 10th presenter from Hook Duk University in San Hao Province, Vietnam, who will be presenting her research paper entitled Application of Technology in Cultivating Mushroom or Cordyceps Millet Militaris for edible and medicinal food at Hong Duk University, Vietnam. So let's welcome Ms. Trin Lang Hung. Good morning, ma'am. Morning, ma'am. Magandang umaga, umaga po. Magandang umaga din po. Everyone, my name is Hong. Good day, everyone. My name is Hong. For now, I am lecturer at Hong Duc University, Penghua Province, Vietnam. And today, I would like to present about my research with title, Application of Technology in Cultivating Mushrooms, Cognizant Militaries for Edible and Medicinal Food at Hong Duc University. At first, for the reason why we conduct the research, for this sales militarist, its mushrooms with high economic benefits due to its many nutritive and medicinal significance. It contains many rare biological active substances such as nucleosides, polysapine, adenosine, polysaccharides, manitol. They have the ability to inhibit the growth of cancer cells, improve insulin production anti-inflammation tory, antioxidant, and increased sperm activity. The health values of these products are especially meaningful in the current periods when countries around the world are facing COVID-19. For the stable food production, this kind of mushrooms was cultivated in microbiology guarantee room and safe growing media. Therefore, the process was ecologically less rooting, uh, proactively produced and economically valuable to the investor. Currently, there are two species of cordyceps are uh, interest in research. The first is cordyceps sinensis, and the second species is cordyceps militaris. The second one contains uh, chemical compounds similar to those of the first one, but can be grown easier in artificial environments. Cordyceps in general are very few in natural and being over exploited. So finding and using natural cordyceps is a difficult problem. On the other hand, um, growing cordyceps meters on a large scale is highly feasible. Therefore, the process will carry out. So the mushroom species were used is Cognizant Militaris. The research was conducted at Hong Duc University, Penhua Province, Vietnam. And uh, the cultivating materials were silkworm pupa, browsed rice, potatoes, coconut water, uh, glucose, and some minerals. This study builds and evaluates the cordyceps cultivation model according to the process diagram inherited from the previous research. And this is uh, how we do breeding uh, cordyceps militaries. This is the experimental uh, indicators. As a result, about ability to breed cognizant militaries at Hong Duc University, Tenghua Province, Vietnam, cultivations of cognizant militaries was carried out in solid and liquid state cultures. Both show good growth of cordyceps mycelium. In the solid state, 
uh, from the initial inoculation site, the mycelium spread around, covered the surface of the petri dish after only seven days, and can be sent transferred to the culture in liquid medium. In the liquid test medium, spores were spread uh, separated from carry out the mycelial mating in the liquid shaking water breeding. After 10 days, uh, the colonies grew tiny and were suspended in the medium and qualified to grow the cordyceps model. And this is um, some picture of breeding uh, for the spawn one and spawn two in soilless state and liquid state at Hong Kong University. About the growth and development ability of um, concept militaries at Hong Kong University. Cordyceps military schools culture on synthetic medium that were uh, out of place at 121 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, including silkworm pupa, brown rice, uh, and some mineral solution. In the flow hood of laboratory, liquid medium made uh, liquid mycelium media was the, uh, delivered evenly on jar medium surface. Then the top was closed and the jars were moved to inoculation incubation. The coffee cells mycelium in incubation period grow fastly in the dark at temperature between 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Spawn run typically took about nine to 10 days that colonization was fully completed. Body fruit was started by changing the life cycles, a 12 hour on and 12 hour off life cycle was suitable for fruiting cordyceps. The used light in the study was white light from less. Fruiting was took uh, about 22 days, then continuously grew until they reached the top of the jar. Both the grain medium uh, and fruiting body can be harvested and utilized. The number of harvested uh, first fruit bodies was about 42 uh, fruit bodies per jar besides the length and uh, diameter of fruit bodies was uh, about uh, 32.5 and 2.8 millimeter respectively. These factors were contributed to the weight of fresh cordyceps harvested per jar with an average value of 23.5 gram per jar. About the processing of cordyceps militaries at Hong Kong University, the harvested uh, mushroom products can be used as healthy food, such as eating fresh, cooking soup, making tea, dried, soaking in honey, soaking in wine, um, etc. And this in the slide is our motto of cultivating mushroom and also the fresh one, fresh uh, cordyceps militaries. And here is our wine and uh, honey uh, that cordyceps militaries were soaking in. The mushroom cultivating motto in one year research school uh, initially brought economical efficiency with net uh, interest of 52,000 USD dollar 
The results show that uh, this potential model needs to be further expanded at Hong Kong University as well as others to bring economic and social value to community. Dear all participants, uh, I just finished my presentation. Thank you for listening and hope for your all idea and advice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ms. Trin Langhung for sharing with us your research paper that the Cordyceps militaris is a mushroom product with a significant economic benefit due to its many nutritive and medicinal significance. Both the naturally grown and artificial cultivated Cordyceps of this healthy food are used for human consumption. So again, thank you so much, ma'am. So let, now, let us now proceed to our open forum. Yes. So, is there any uh, question from our participants? Co paper presenter. So, any question, please? So, okay. So, we have here another uh, written question for our eight presenter. Um, Miss Jane S. Galidai. We have here a question from our panelists. Ma'am, are you still yes, there? Okay. Yes, uh, so let me read the question. After the training and dispersal, what will be the next project or activities will be implemented to ensure the sustainability of the technology? Is there any value adding products from goat production technology? Um, yes, ma'am. Hopefully, actually, the, the sustainability of the project is to every, if the, the goat have already a kid, they will going to pass it to another member of the organization. But if that is the suggestion, I'm going to suggest it to our extension uh, extension uh, director that uh, we're going to do that, ma'am. For the value adding product. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, ma so again, thank you so much, ma'am Galindai. So another yes, question to our 10th presenter, Ms. Trin Langho, ma'am. We have here a question from you. Yes, for um, let me read this the question. How your research study contributes to the needs of the community? Do you think this research can address the sustainable food system and livelihood? And at this moment, is there any pilot testing of this potential model in your identified community? I uh, thank you for the question. Uh, for my research, at first, uh, I think um, our research for now is quite uh, good and valuable for this situation uh, because now we know that all the countries around the world are facing with the COVID-19. So our research focus on the products of Cordyceps militaries is this is a medicinal mushroom, so um, it can uh, help can help us uh, to increase um, uh, increase the good health and uh, can be um, inhabit inhabit some um, some disease that uh, we know that. For now, if the people uh, with some disease can be uh, going worse in the COVID-19. So uh, this kind of products can, uh, can help us people good in the health and have a basic health. Uh, another um, thing that I think that especially now, not only um, around the world and even now in my province in Vietnam, uh, we also have some case up easy for uh, from the COVID nineteen. So uh, our products now contribute to our community. 
uh, we also uh, even now uh, we share the products to the people in our university, our community uh, to improve the health of the people. Um, besides, uh, our product can be cultivated in the rooms in the laboratory. So I think uh, we not we will not be uh, um, need to uh, need to be. Um, uh, I mean, we can uh, we can conduct it in the laboratory, so we will not uh, need to be based on the natural. So uh, we can do it by our by ourselves and uh, can produce every everywhere and uh, every time that uh, can use for more product for people in the community this time. Thank you. So thank you so much, ma'am, uh, Trin Lang Ho, for answering uh, that question. So we really hope that your research paper can now uh, uh, can now uh, uh, translate to the solution.
significant difference in dry matter, organic matter intake, and digestibility, as well as the neutral detergent fiber. However, there is a significant difference in crude protein intake and crude protein digestibility. So treatment three shows the highest value in CPI and the treatment with highest CPD is the treatment three and the treatment two. Then the table shows also the total dry matter intake and the cumulative weight gain and return above feed cost as well as the feed cost per kilogram presented the table, the result of the of these parameters. Uh, there is a significant difference shows in the shown in the total dry matter intake, cumulative weight gain and return above feed cost. The treatment two and three got the highest dry matter intake, higher gain and weight, and uh, it's because of this physiochemical, which is enhanced the feed intake of this of the diets. So the quality of feeds was measured by the performance of the animals. So for the return above feed cost, treatment two got the highest return with the lowest, uh, lowest feed cost. So it means goats can be fed with a higher amount of tricanteral lip milk without the substitution effect. This can also uh, explain further in the protein digestion in the ruminant animals. So the higher ratio of tricanteral lip milk improved crude protein and uh, crude protein digestibility due to the urea treatment and the high quality supplements. The higher microbial action in the rumen, the urea treated mice tuber will utilize to provide nitrogen and energy to the microbes. The TLM degradation in rumen is low, but higher absorption of amino acids in the intestinal level. So it means high protein deposits to the animal's body tissues coming from the source of supplements indicate that the protein requirements of animals for growth and production were met. Also, goat was attracted to consume more UTMS due to the palatability and the fermentation characteristic of feeds. So TLM ratios were increased, weight gain and goats also increased. So the high intake and digestibility of dry matter, organic matter, broad protein and neutral detergent fiber were influenced the improvement of the animal performance. So as well as this implies that increasing TLM in the region that uh, than pure concentrate could reduce the cost. So no substitution effect occurred because of the responded to the high level of the recanteral lip meal at the lower cost. So therefore, feeding urea-treated mice tover as a visal diet with a supplementation of the concentrate and recanteral lip meal ratios can promote higher in vivo digestibility, better growth performance, as well as greater returns. So therefore, it is recommended to supplement the ratio of concentrate at 0.52% body weight and the tricanteral lip meal at 0.75% body weight. And uh, that's all. Thank you for the listening. Thank you so much, Ma'am April Rose Kagai, for your informative uh, study. Um, that the alternative supplement is necessary to avoid the substitution. Hello, audio. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Okay, so thank you, Miss April Rose Kagai, for sharing your research study that the alternative supplement is necessary to avoid the substitution effect and high cost of concentrate. So next presenter from Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, Abra Philippines, will be presenting her research paper titled Squash Peelings as Nutritive Supplement in Baking Cookies by Miss Genesis C. Bugtong. 
Good morning, ma'am. Is is Mom Genesis is in the room? Hello, ma'am. Mom Genesis, you uh, are you still there? So internet connection po ata mga sa office nila. Nawala po. Okay po. Wait lang. So again, we uh, experience another technical difficulties. A pleasant day to everyone. I am Genesis Simbugtong. I am pleased to present to you our research study titled Squash Peelings as Nutritive Supplement in Baking Cookies. Food is a very important part of our daily life. In every gathering, one can see delicacies that are loved and enjoyed. We can't deny the fact that we are a big fan of sweet foods like cakes and pastries, especially cookies. Squash or calabasa is commonly grown in the Philippines throughout the year. They have a number of overlapping characteristics and belong to the genus Cucurbita. The Philippine Bureau of Plant Industry refers to calabasa as Cucurbita muscata Dutch which includes several varieties of winter squash. There have been studies made on baking cookies with mixture of variety of ingredients but not with squash peelings. According to New York City-based nutritionist Tracy Lockwood Beckerman, the entire squash is an edible vegetable. In fact, most veggies are meant to be eaten as a whole. It might seem strange to eat the skin of a squash, but if you rethink the norm, you'll be able to take in some pretty impressive health benefits beyond what's just in the fleshy pulp. So we came up with an idea of making everyone's favorite snack. This is study aimed to determine which among the varying amounts 1 fourth cup, 1 half cup, and 1 cup of squash peelings was best in making cookies. Specifically, it sought to answer the following question. What are the sensory ratings given by the evaluators to the different formulation of squash peelings as nutritive supplement in baking cookies in terms of a. Aroma, B. Texture, C. Taste, D. Color, E. Appearance, and F. General Acceptability. Which of the three treatments of squash peeling cookies is the most accepted by the evaluators? What is the cost of squash peeling cookies using the different treatments? And what is the shelf life of squash peeling cookies in different amounts? The study made use of completely randomized design. It made use of three treatments which replicated as trials. The treatments are as follows. Treatment 1 with 1 fourth cup squash peelings added. Treatment 2 with 1 half cup squash peelings added. And treatment 3 with 1 cup squash peelings added. So here's the procedure in making squash peeling cookies. First, wash the squash thoroughly. Peel off the skin and wash it again in a bowl of water. Boil the squash peelings until it becomes tender enough to blend. And then put it in a blender and blend until smooth. 
in a large bowl, whisk together the sugar, salt, and melted margarine until a paste with no lumps. Whisk the egg and vanilla. Beat until light ribbons fall off the whisk and remain a short while before falling back into the mixture. Sift in the flour and baking soda, then fold the mixture with the spatula. After that, put the blended squash fillings, then chill the dough for at least 30 minutes. The longer the dough rests, the more complex its flavor will be. So preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Next is scoop the dough and make a small circle and put in the baking pan, leaving at least 2 inches of space between cookies and edges of the pan so that the cookies can spread evenly. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes or until the edges have started to very brown. And then cool completely and to serve. The squash peeling cookies underwent a series of evaluation. The respondents of this study were 20 random individuals. The researcher asked permission to the random individuals to evaluate the squash peeling cookies. The researcher discussed and explained the product and how to evaluate it. Each respondent received a piece of cookies to taste together with the questionnaire for them to evaluate the product. A rating scale, which was the 7-point scale, was used. The attributes to be rated are aroma, texture, taste, color, appearance, and general acceptability. As you can see on the table, in terms of aroma, the evaluators preferred treatment 2. It got a mean average of 6.18, followed by treatment 3 with 6.15, and lastly treatment 1 with a mean average of 5.90. The table showed a little difference among the treatments as one of the respondents say that all of them have the same smell. The evaluators preferred treatment 3 in, the, in terms of texture with a mean average of 6.53. The table shown implies that the texture of the different treatments was not similar as or it showed variations as evaluated by the respondents. Treatment 1 got only an a mean average of 5.90, which is the lowest, while treatment 2 got the second highest mean average with 6.08. In terms of taste, treatment 1 has the highest mean score of 6.58, followed by treatment 2 with 6.25, and lastly treatment 3 with 6.18. Treatment 1 was preferred by the valves because of its delicious taste and aromatic flavor. In terms of color, Treatment 1 is slightly brown, treatment 2 is golden brown, while treatment 3 is dark brown. The evaluators preferred treatment 2 because it has the best color. For the appearance, they prefer treatment 2 more than treatment 1 and 3 because they like its uniformity in shape and its smooth appearance. In terms of the general acceptability, treatment 2 got the highest mean score of 6.33 followed by treatment 3 with 6.13 then treatment 1 got the lowest average of 5.95. This generally implies that treatment 2 that was added with one half squash peeling looked very appetizing, tasted savory, increased one's appetite, it looked golden brown in color, and its texture was very smooth. So as you can see on the table, the evaluators preferred and accepted treatment 2. As shown on the table for treatment 1, the total expenses amounted to 76 pesos and yielded 60 pieces. The cost of each cookie was 2 pesos. The total income was 120 pesos, less the total expenses, which gave a net profit of 44 pesos. The return on investment was 57.89%. For treatment 2, the expenses was 81 pesos, yielded 70 pieces. The selling price of each cookie was 2 pesos. The total income was 140 pesos less the total expenses which gave a net profit of 59 pesos. The return on investment was 72.84%. And for treatment 3, the total expenses amounted to 86 pesos yielded 80 pieces. The total income was 160 pesos less the total expenses which gave a net profit of 74 pesos. The return on investment was 86.05%. The squash peeling cookies was placed in a cookie jar and stored properly in a cabinet. The researchers always check all the treatments and listed down details about the changes in appearance, texture, aroma, and taste. The shelf life of treatment 1 with 1 fourth cup of squash peelings was 7 to 10 days. 
while treatment 2 with one half cup squash fillings and treatment 3 with one cup of squash fillings was 11 to 14 days. Treatment 2 and 3 exhibited the longest shelf life. It is therefore concluded that the more amount of squash fillings added to the cookies, the longer was the shelf life. So for the findings, treatment 2 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of aroma. Treatment 3 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of texture. Treatment 1 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of taste. Treatment 2 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of color. And treatment 2 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of appearance. Treatment 2 was prepared by the evaluators in terms of general acceptability. Treatment 2 was the most preferred and accepted by the evaluators. Treatment 3 exhibited the highest profitability and return on investment. Treatment 2 and 3 had the longest shelf life of 11 to 14 days. Squash being affordable, very nutritious, and is locally abundant should be used in baking cookies. Since the use of squash fillings is proved to be acceptable, distribution of the result of this study is encouraged for community knowledge enhancement. Farmers are encouraged to plant squash in their backyard garden and fields to produce nutritious cookies and locally available products for its ingredients. As basis, bakers and entrepreneurs may consider using squash fillings as one of the ingredients to promote healthy pastries. It is also emphasized that the product should be sold at affordable price. This research study may be repeated by other researchers who might be interested to further look into the essentials of baking cookies with squash fillings that would further validate of its results. A further investigation to determine the shelf life of the product is also recommended. So here are the list of the references of our study. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you so much, Ms. Genesis C. Bugtong, for sharing with us your research paper that squash fillings is proved, accepted, and provides a basis for our bakers and entrepreneurs to consider squash filling as one of the ingredients to promote healthy pastries. Thank you. So next, Peace Center from Central Bico State University of Agriculture, Spokot Campus. Bicol, Philippines, will be presenting her research paper entitled Mushroom, a Superfood and Medicine, a Review on Nutritional, Medicinal, and Healthy Benefits of Mushroom by Ms. Catherine B. Abuela. Ma'am, good morning. A pleasant a pleasant day to everyone. Today, I am here to present our paper review entitled Mushroom a Superfood and Medicine, a Review on Nutritional, Medicinal, and Health Benefits of Mushroom. Mushroom has been part of the human culture for thousands of years, which were recognized for their attractive culinary attributes and nutraceutical potential. These are based on the study of Valverde et al. 2015. However, these edible fungus provide an important nutrients depending on its type, composition, and nutritional profile. Marimbo 2019. Nowadays, mushrooms are popular, valuable foods because they are low in calories but rich in carbohydrates, fat, sodium, and cholesterol free. Mushroom is also known for its healing capacities and nutraceutical potential. Here are the objectives of this study. First is to discuss the nutritional, medicinal, and health benefits of mushroom. Second is to identify the nutritional composition of mushroom. And lastly is to identify the nutraceutical and therapeutic application of mushroom. Now, let us start to discuss its nutritional benefits. Mushroom is considered to be a complete healthy food and suitable for all age groups, as it contains all nutrient elements required for human in desired proportions. This study are based on Manikandan 2011. According to Barros et al. 2007, mushrooms are very useful for vegetarian diets because it provides all the essential amino acids for adults. 
Likewise, it can be recommended to heart patients since it is a cholesterol-free food. Furthermore, in underdeveloped countries, protein malnutrition has taken epidemic proportion. So the FAO or the Food and Agricultural Organization recommended the mushroom foods to solve the problem of malnutrition due to significant nutritional benefits of mushroom. Some of the nutritional mushroom are the following. First, we have Fomitopsis penicola, known to lower cholesterol level, improves the general immunity of human being. In addition, it is also used for the treatment of cancer, headache, nerve pain, diarrhea, constipation, liver problems, and excessive urination. Grenga et al. 2014. The second one is we have Monascos perforius. It contains anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Does it help to prevent coronary heart disease and stroke? Yang and Musa, 2012. According to SIM 2017, mushroom contains of 56% of carbohydrate, which is mainly found in the protein body of the mushroom. One of this example is the Pleurotus erengi. That consists of the most carbohydrate amount of 41 grams per 100 grams, followed by Pleurotus sahur cacho that contains of 38 grams per 100 grams of carbohydrates in a dry weight basis. Arian 2017. Mushroom is also have 30% of protein. The protein content of mushroom For example, is the Pleurotus sour cacho that had the most lipid content consisting of 0 0.61 grams, followed by Pleurotus florida that composed of 0 0.46 grams. Paridoxin, pantotonic acid, nicotinic acid, nicotinamide, folic acid, and cobalamin, which is essential for normal cellular function, growth, metabolism, and muscle development. It is also unique in such a way that it contains 0.32 to 0.65 mg of vitamin B12 per gram, allowing the 3 grams of fresh mushrooms. Minerals are the nutrients that exist in the body and are as essential as human needs for oxygen to sustain life. Mushroom is one of the ideal food that rich in minerals such as potassium, phosphorus, sodium, calcium, and magnesium. However, according to Rudowska and Lasky 2007, the mineral content of mushroom are based on species, age, and the diameter of its protein body. Additionally, it depends upon the type of the substrate that is being utilized. Next is the medicinal benefits. Mushroom medicine has no side effect on human body. Instead, it contains physiological properties for bioregulation or immunological enhancement, maintenance of hemiostasis, and regulation of biorhythm cure and prevention of various diseases, as well as improvement of life-threatening diseases such as cancer, cerebral stroke, and heart diseases. These are based on the study of virus et al. 2017. One of the medicinal mushrooms with its therapeutic application are the following. First, we have lentinola idodes, compounds erythalinine and lentinine. Medicinal properties, lower cholesterol and anti-cancer agent, Edman et al. 2007. The second one is Agaricus bisporus, 
compound lectins and medicinal properties is to enhance insulin secretion. AMAD 1984. Mushroom as antioxidant. Based on the study of Leo 2012, the best natural antioxidant mushroom is Agaricus bisporus. Furthermore, mushroom Stropharia rugoso anulata, Clytocybe maxima, Catatellus meventricosum, and Lacaria amististina contains beneficial bioactive compounds such as phenols, ergosterol, tocopherol, ascorbic acid, unsaturated fatty acid, and essential amino acid which could be used as antihyperglycemic and antioxidant ingredients since it is effective in the protections against hyperglycemia and oxidative stress. Mushroom as antimicrobial. One of the mushroom with antimicrobial properties is Osmoporus odoratus that produce petroleum ether, chloroform, acetone, and water extract that are useful for their antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, Bacillus subtilis, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In terms of the nutraceutical benefits, most mushrooms are being consumed as a functional food and as dietary supplement are known as nutraceutical. Many edible mushrooms like Pleurotus species and Schizophyllum communi enjoy a high demand of premium price because of their high nutritional value as well as its pharmaceutical potential. These are based on the study of DUTA 2013. Some of the nutraceutical value of mushroom are the following. First, we have Grifola prondosa, compounds, Grifloan and lectins, medicinal properties, increase insulin secretion. The second one, we have Bulbariella bulbacea, compound, glycoprotein, medicinal properties, lower blood pressure. The third one is Pleurotus florida, compound, polysaccharide, medicinal properties, anti-hypercholesterolemia. And last one, we have Plamulina bitipes, compound, flamulin, and medicinal properties, antioxidant, anti-agging, and anti-cancer. For the conclusion of this study, mushrooms represent a major nutrient-dense, versatile food and a top source of powerful nutritional and medicinal value due to its remarkable pharmacological features and interest as functional foods that consist of great concentration of bioactive substances, which is crucial intervention for chronic diseases as well as help mitigate the risk of developing serious health conditions. That's the end of my presentations. Thank you so much, Ma'am Catherine, for providing us information about mushrooms serve as functional food with significant health and nutraceutical benefits to mankind that can be considered as superfoods. Thank you. So next, our second to the last paper presenter from Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology, Abra Philippines, who will be presenting her research paper titled Organoleptic and psychochemical analysis of block palm wine affected by different key sugar level by Miss Herleen C. Binlaya Buana. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, po. Good day, everyone. I am Herlin Binlayan Buanan presenting to you the article Organoleptic and Physicochemical Analysis of Black Plum Sisigium Cumini Wine Affected by Different Yeast Sugar Levels. So, wines are traditionally fermented from grapes in the vineyards of Western country, and Sisigium cumini, or popularly known as Duhat, on the other hand, is a tropical fruit that offers a high content of soluble solids possible for fermentation of wine. <clears throat> 
So given the country's abundance of these tropical fruits, there's a growing market for locally produced wines. And that is to say, strawberry wines, blackberry wines, citrus wine, to name a few. So literature also says that the fruit contains bioactive compounds that promotes good health. So the objectives of the study is to utilize black plum for the fermentation of wine, to evaluate sensory properties of black plum wine, to determine the physicochemical properties of black plum wine, and to register the technology as utility model in the intellectual property rights of the Philippines. So the methods of this experiment is first the sugar extraction, the mass preparation, and the wine preparation. So another so in wine preparation, pasteurization comes first uh, for the extracted fruit juice of the duhat and addition of sugar and yeast at different levels proceeds, which uh, treatment one is 15% uh, sugar and 5% yeast concentration, treatment two, 20%, 10%, and treatment 3, 25% and 15%, treatment 4, 30% and 20%, and finally the treatment 5, 35% is to 25%. And this uh, follows fermentation, decanting, followed by racking and aging for six months. And the data gathered are the following in terms of sensory evaluation aroma and flavor strength astringency color and clarity and general acceptability are uh, observed in terms of organoleptic evaluation and in terms of physicochemical analysis ph tss or total soluble solids and alcohol percentage are being observed in terms of its physicochemical analysis. So the experiment is done in a completely randomized design, and all the data are gathered. All the data gathered are analyzed through one-way ANOVA. So table two shows the result of the experiment. So in terms of aroma and flavor strength, statistically, there was no significant differences among the treatment groups for both the aroma strength and the flavor profile of the wine. However, it is also observed that as the concentration increases, the descriptive score also increases. So this means that uh, panel members notice an increasing intensity of aroma and flavor profile of the experimental wine. So nevertheless, regardless of the formulation, it was observed that all groups were observed to have a distinct aroma and flavor of the wine. So the findings also were in good agreement with a researcher uh, stating a similar observations among treatments. So in terms of its astringency, astringency is an attribute in wine that leaves a coarse or rough sensation in mouth after drinking wines. So in terms of this property, a significant change was observed in uh, treatment five. So moreover, uh, recognizable astringency was observed in the treatments one, two, three, and four. But as the formulation increases, uh, pronounced astringent characteristics was observed by sensory evaluators as the formulation also increases. And according to literature, Sisigium cumini was characterized to have high tannin content. So the pronounced astringent property observed in the experimental wine was maybe due to the high tannin content of the cumini fruit. And however, the astringent attribute of the wine shall not serve as an indication of a pure, poor quality of wine. And wines normally have astringent and bitter taste because of its phenolic acids. And in fact, a similar study was conducted by 
uh, venu stating a uh, correlation of phenolics as astringent uh, properties of uh, wines. It is being correlated that the effect of phenolics to wines uh, have an effect to uh, astringency of uh, substance. And in terms also of its clarity and color, the experimental wines were found to have a significant change in terms of clarity and color. So this means that um, formulated wines from Duhat uh, with different concentrations of sugar and yeast have a positive effect on parameters uh, color and clarity. So during the preparation of the experiment, the wine was clarified through racking uh, at four times. So to clear the sediments at the bottom of the bottle. So this probably was the reason uh, for a clearer wine uh, observed in the experiment. So however, um, it will not actually lead to a poor quality if the color of a, of a wine is darker. So actually, the observation is also in consonance with Patil that dark purple color was preferred most by sensory evaluators. So in terms also of its general acceptability, there was a significant uh, observation on overall acceptability of the formulated wines at a 5% level of significance. So the mean ratings of treatments 2 to treatment 5 equivalent of like very much. So this implies that the optimum concentration that affects the general acceptability of wine ranges from um, 20% to 35% sugar cane extract and 10% to 25% yeast concentrations. So this observation is in consonance with the other organoleptic attributes that as the concentration increases, the higher the score. So in terms of its physicochemical properties, pH content shows a significant uh, difference among treatments. So a high pH beverage is susceptible to attacks of undesirable microorganisms that causes undesirable changes in a substance. So in this observation, it shows a relative high significant effect. So the, the effect of sugar and yeast concentrations have a significant effect on the pH content of the wine. So in terms of total soluble solids and alcohol content, it can be shown in the table that there is a significant difference among treatments. So the increasing value of alcohol percentage is well proportionate with the decrease of the total soluble solids as the sugar present um, during the fermentation were metabolized to produce alcohol aided by yeast. So, in conclusion, the different yeast sugar concentrations have a positive effect on the organoleptic and physicochemical properties of wine. And furthermore, Duhat can be utilized for wine fermentation to add value to the less marketable fruits. And it is highly recommended that the technology is packaged for commercialization for the utilization of farmers. And these are the references used in conducting the study. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you so much, Ms. Herlin P. E. Pinlayan Buonan. Uh, for the significant findings that Sisidium kumini could be locally fermented to substitute the expensive imported wine from different formulation affects the organoleptic and the psychochemical properties of the wine. So thank you. So now let's proceed to our last presenter.
from Northwest Samar State University, Samar, Philippines, will be presenting this paper entitled Gross, Development, uh, Gross Performance and Profitability of Broiler Supplement with Burmy Meal under a Free Range Management System by Mr. Marcos E. Bolido. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good day, everyone. In the International Conference on Education, Environment, and Agriculture. I am Marcos Erambulledo, presenter. Allow me to present a research study entitled Growth Performance and Profitability of Broilers Supplemented with Burmy Mill under Free Range Management System. The myth of birds reared under free rent system is preferred by the consumers due to a better sensory quality attributes, according to Habib et al. of 2019. A study et al. of 2017 revealed that free rent access for broiler chicken can benefit animal welfare because the birds have access to a more natural environment and more opportunities to perform natural behaviors than an indoor system. Bahadori et al. of 2017 emphasized also that Burmi or earthworm meal is superior to fish meal in terms of protein content. Supplementing the diet with 5% Burmi powder had no negative effects on the growth of pallets and increased antioxidant enzyme activities in the liver, according to Sang et al. of 2018. The location of the study was in summer, particularly in Sanori, the municipality of Sanori, where the Northwest Summer State University Sanori campus is located. The study was undertaken with an objectives to evaluate the effect of Birmingham supplementation on growth performance and profitability of broiler under free range management system. Materials and methods. The free range system was constructed with cages measured to 1.4 square feet per broiler in compartment. The free range area was prepared by division using a net. It's measured two meter by six meter compartment or per compartment. The powdered Burmy meal was purchased based on the amount needed and the whole duration of the study. Burmy meal were mixed to commercial feeds based on the percentage requirements. Using complete randomized design, there were four treatments and five replications. Following treatment were designated as follows. For treatment one, commercial feeds. Treatment two, 2% 2 Burmy meal and 98% commercial feeds. For treatment three, 3% 3 Burmy meal plus 97% commercial feeds. For treatment four, 5% Burmy meal plus 95% commercial feeds. The Burmy was dried properly before it runs for grinding or powdering the Burmy. Third, the grinding of Burmy measured and mixed to the commercial pitch according to the measurement presented in the different treatment. The broiler chicks was undergone brooding using empty cartons. It's also it's established on the preference side of the study. And the preference side were the growing of uh, broilers were also located. Result and discussion, water and feed consumption of broilers. 
and the graft. The Burmese meal supplementation of 2%, 3%, and 5% did not significantly influence the rate of water and feed consumption. It showed that supplementation of Burmese meal at either 2, 3, or 5% were just comparable to each other. Thus, the overall palatability or quality of feed mix mixture apparently similar as reported by Prayogi et al. of 2011. The initial weight and final weight of broilers and the group, the final weight of broilers was not affected by the supplementation of Burmese meal at 2, 3, or 5 percent mixture. The comparable weight of chickens can be directly correlated to the feed intake should no significant differences on the feed consumption relative to the treatments tested. Raisa for Etalab 2014 reported that protein efficiency percentage increased with level of earthworm meal at 5 to 10% numerically, but was not significant. Weight gain, feed conversion ratio of broilers. And the graph, Burmese meal supplementation of feeds did not significantly increase the average gain weight of broilers, but were comparable to commercial feeds. Consequently, the feed conversion ratio was also not significantly different among treatments. Prayogi of 2011 also stated that Burmese meal inclusion by 0, 5, 10% embroiler diet was not significant effect in the body weight gain of broilers, but the use of 15% gave the significantly effect compared to the other treatment due to protein intake and protein efficiency, as mentioned in the body weight of broilers. Sofian et al. of 2010 showed that Burmese significantly led to gain weight and improved feed conversion ratio in broiler chicken. Live weight, carcass weight, and resting percentage of broilers. And the group, the results indicated that Burmese meal supplementation at lower concentration had no significant effects due to the similarity of carcass, live weight, and dressing percentage relative to each treatment. The comparative effects can also be correlated to the feed water consumption of chicken that were comparable among treatments as it compares the growth and development
I be here. At this point, let me thank everyone for taking your time in attending this session in this international conference, a rewarding and fulfilling one. We hope to see you again next year during the third ISEA conference. So we will see you then in the main room and let's wait for another session. So after uh, which we will have the closing ceremony for this uh, conference. Once again, thank you everyone for your participation and attendance in this session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. God bless you, po. Thank you so much, po. Thank you, po. Mabuhay, Pilipinas. Mabuhay, Vietnam. Can we automatically transfer to the main room? Uh, uh, please wait, sir. So it's it will uh, automatically uh, transfer to the main room. So please wait. Okay. So again, please stand by. Please stand by, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stand by the lock. Hello, Mom Kagai. Hello, Mom Galera. Hello. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am and sir. Uh, to go back in the main room, please uh, uh, click or uh, find the 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 three um, button in the lower part of your laptop. Okay. So just click the return to main session. And another good system. Perhaps this could be a way of saying thank you to Mother Nature for nurturing man in his landscapes. Welcome to Isaiah 2021.
no gross. So that means that the entire process somehow followed the good manufacturing practices. Although the general group of microorganisms did grow, but we are thankful that pathogenic microorganisms were arrested or I mean eliminated in the process. So there's no entry of pathogenic microorganisms in that is a very good result. That means GMP was strictly followed in the entire process from pre-washing up to pasteurization. For the storage results, we can see 